nobody's fault but mine.
Well done, Kenny. David again. <laughs> Simon. Simon, sorry. <laughs> oh, that'll be it then. Okay, Doug. Drug scale. Hang on, see, where's the bloody old, uh, what's it called?
Okay, now what I'm going to need is, uh, maybe I'll just drop this mic stand out of the way. If you can bring me another one up about that just there, okay? <coughs> oh, yes, you were the one with the joke yesterday. Uh, Sorry? If you, yeah, at the beginning of the acoustic stuff, bring us a microphone up the back way. Yeah, yeah, just a stand. I know you Time for the Will Scarlet show, yes? And on second guitar we have Alan Adale. <laughs> on vocals, Little John, and on bass, Robin of Sherwood. Madeline, up! Spend the days with one of the cows, hold my stuff and drive. drop the vocal level down just because it might feed back. I'll keep my head in between the mic and the speakers. Now when those vocals come in at the end it's impossible for these guys to pitch if they can't hear.
so can you, can you turn Phil's guitar down a bit in these back ones? Or at least tune it up. <laughs> You'll never know how much I really love you. You'll never know how much I really care. Listen, who I do you want to know a secret? Same place then. Gets too hungry for a dinner at eight.
this no, yeah, no, he's not on. He's not on. Just point camera. Okay. okay. Yeah. Action. All right. Describe to us the day that you get called in on this project, if you can remember it. Did somebody just call you up and say, hey, come play bass, or well, what happened? Well, the guy that uh, produced the record called Tim Palmer mm. gave me a phone call and said that uh, Robert was looking for a bass player, uh, a performance bass player, really. Mm. And uh, we'd all like to turn up at the studio they were recording and uh, audition. So I, I turned up. Were you enthusiastic about was, this? Or? Yeah, I was enthusiastic. I <laughs> was very surprised and yeah. excited about it. Yeah, and um, we did a, a day's rehearsals and a day's recording. Yeah. It's very exciting. What did they have together at that point? Or like all well, this they were just mixing the album, now uh -huh. and And uh, I listened to it and I was, well, I was really impressed with it, you know. It was very fresh. Yeah. When did you realize that you were in the group? Did Robert come up one day and just um, put his arm around you or something? Not till now. It wasn't really like that. No, it was um, in the first tour. We did an English tour, a warm-up warm tour. And um, really, that was hard work. Right. Um, we had to really pull together as a band, playing in England. And it was that, that working process that did it, really, yeah. before we got to the States. Did you, when you guys do Zeppelin stuff on stage, do you, did, you, did you sit down at the beginning and say, well, let's try and do it note for note? Or, I mean, what's your part in this as a bassist? Are you copying the well, original lines? Yeah, or? I mean, what I, I, mean, I find personally... I like to learn exactly as it was played, and then mm. I do my interpretation. I put bits and bobs in, you know. Yeah. Bits and bobs, that means <laughs> little things that I like to put in myself. Yeah. But so what's the reaction been like in the States for you? Great. This is your first trip over here for this tour, yeah. right? Very exciting. Was it anything like you pictured it to be? I had no idea what it was going to be like. <laughs> no. I mean, it was great, really good, and uh, American audiences are very exciting. Were you surprised how big Zepp the whole Zeppelin thing was over here? I mean, no, different. I wasn't, because, uh, you know, I mean, Zeppelin were a band when I was younger that I used to sort of, it was a cultural thing. Yeah. And when I actually got to analyse Zeppelin by playing the material, I realised it was they were not a straightforward band. No. And, um, In what way? Well, musically, it's, it's not straight down the line, really rock and roll. It's very well thought out. There's a lot of feel in it no. and a lot of soul. Has, has Paige showed up at any time and jumped on stage with you yeah, guys? Yeah, Hammersmith Ogre in London. Oh, that's right. I heard about it. There's yeah. a bootleg of that out, Yeah, right? that's right. <laughs> yeah, it was good. Really mm. good. That was exciting. Can we stop for one second? Sure. Can we just turn the light? It's, his lights, his, his eyes are twinkling. Like, it's like a... He's right? happy. It's, it's like... Uh, just just twist that light just a little bit. <laughs> turn down the twinkle. Who's that? I think it's better. I'm going to stop rolling. Yeah. Okay, I'm rolling again. Okay, what now? And you can wind it. Curve right here. Okay. Sound okay? All right. So you guys had a break for two months and you, That's in, right. instead of taking time off, you did what? Well, I mean, we did a bit of rehearsing ready for this tour. Yeah. Uh, this uh, third leg, as we would call it, of the tour. But yeah, I mean, I had about a month off and then uh, two weeks rehearsals mm -hmm. down in Devon. Did you, what did you, how did you decide what this, this set was going to be like? I mean, you've completely overhauled the show, right? Yeah, I mean, I think this set's a lot more mature now. Um, I mean, we do it as a band. I mean, you know, uh, we'll sit down and we'll try out some ideas. I mean, we, we personally, I mean, I tried out some numbers at home mm -hmm. that, uh, that were suggested, but by the time we got together as a band situation, we changed that and mm -hmm. went to some completely different numbers. What might be the big surprises, would you imagine? Numbers? Yeah. Um, well, we're doing some acoustic numbers in the set. And that, oh. that will be surprising. But also, how you say that, complete contrast, uh, we got some material, like Dance On My Own, we're doing off the new album, mm -hmm. which is really electro. So it goes from one extreme to the other. Wow. Yeah. It's going to be any stuff that we've never heard before, aside from what you do at Soundcheck? No, not, not as such. I mean, in Soundcheck, we have been trying some new ideas for the next album. No. But uh, everyone will have to wait for that. What's that going to be like the next album? Are you starting to put stuff together? Or are you just a lot more confident now after all this playing together? Yeah, I mean, it's a band now. We've been on the road together. And uh, I think the next record's going to be more of a, a band vibe to it. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Are Phil and Robert doing most of the, the material? Or are you all pitching in? Or? We all pitch in, yeah. I mean, uh, everyone's given equal opportunity. It's a band yeah. situation. Mm -hmm. yeah. are, you, are you featured in the new video? Uh, well, the new video being Ship of Fools is mm -hmm. Robert, because it's a very personal number to him. Yeah. Talk all and heaven knows we're, we're all in that video. Mm -hmm. yeah. Great. Okay, that's good hey, for me. I'd like to ask one question. Uh -huh. 
how was it for you? I mean, you obviously, you know, grew up listening to Zeppelin. Yeah. I mean, working with someone like Robert Plant, you, know, you, you grew up listening to him, and all of a sudden mm -hmm. now you're playing with him on stage. You can describe what that feeling is like to you. Well, uh, to look at. To yeah. Run. That feeling. Well, really, when we first did Trample Underfoot, mm -hmm. and that was in a gig at a gig in Starbridge in England, a warm-up day. It was very, very exciting, and very strange. <laughs> In what way? Well, you know, I mean, it, it was one of the first bass lines that I learned to play. <laughs> and I heard it on Old Grove's Test in England, which is an English show. Wow. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I was sitting in my bedroom, well, was, bed sit in Bristol, and it came on television, and I just played along with it. Wow. And very straightforward, but actually playing on stage after that was extremely exciting. And also, got, um, the situation I was in before I was working with Robert was mm. so different, you know. Yeah. Suddenly, when I was playing Zeppelin material, it was very exciting. Is, is Robert like, you don't, he doesn't act like a living legend just in normal life, does he? I mean, he's a pretty down to earth guy. Yeah, he's, you know, he's a player, he's another band member. <laughs> yeah. Another band member. Yeah, very much. You know. right. Yeah, he's the singer in the band, you know, writing. You know. Do you guys all hang out together somewhere? I mean, do you go out drinking at night, or does he send yeah, the young I'll, guys in the band out to go drinking together? When we're on the road, we do. Yeah, yeah very much. And uh, in the breaks, I mean, at the moment, there hasn't been much of a break. Yeah. The only break we had, we got together for rehearsals anyway. Wow. You know, it's like Mummy, I'm home in this band. <laughs> That's good. Okay. Good for you. Thank, Thank you. Very much. Thank you. It was great. Oh, right. for me. I'm rolling. We're getting a little rustle. From where? The shirt? Yeah, I think it'd be all right if, he's, if you're reasonably still. Yeah, I'm gonna, uh, I Don't think that'll grab call. your yeah. chest or anything. We're rolling with okay. his feet. Okay. All right. So you come into this this project through the rest is history, right? You've worked with Phil. Is yeah. that your association? When did when did they? Do you remember what your feelings were when they called you up and said, "Come on in and be the drummer for this group"? <laughs> yeah. Well, Robert phoned me and left a message on the answer phone. <laughs> really? Yeah. And uh, he just said, "Hi, this is Robert Plant. Give me a call." And I thought, <laughs> "Yeah, it's Robert Plant. Yeah, really." So I phoned him back, and it was, and uh, he said, "Come down to a rehearsal." Which I did, and that was it. And, and you just sat, sat down and started playing. There were no. Yeah, we just played. And, uh, Does everybody pretty much much know the Zeppelin stuff and playing stuff and yeah. these like studio musicians know all that stuff? Yeah, I think so. I mean, Led Zeppelin is so much a part of musical, you know, whatever heritage. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the stuff that we're doing now, live, we didn't even really have to rehearse because we just, you know, we knew it anyway. Yeah. So, what new Zeppelin stuff are you doing in this new show? Uh, new songs, we're doing Immigrant Song, which is one of my all-time favourites. Um, we're doing a couple of others. I don't want to give too much away. You know? Well, we're not going to give it away. We're just, we won't tell anybody, will we? No. Yeah. <laughs> well, when you finally got to hang around with Robert, was he pretty much the way you would expect him to be? Or was he like friendlier or, or meaner? Or? Um, I don't know what I expected, because as I say, initially when I got the phone call, I thought he was someone messing about. I didn't think it was really him. So. No, I just, I just turned up at the studio, and the first thing he said to me was, do you want a cup of tea? <laughs> really? And I thought, well, yeah, this, this, uh, this guy's all right, you know, <laughs> <laughs> tea, yeah. So we had some tea, and then we messed about. So. Yeah. And yeah, he's, he's just a really nice guy. Yeah. I think people have always thought that... Okay, can we hold up a second? Yeah, we need to work it. Oh, yeah. Go on. Rolling. Rolling. Speed. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. I think people always thought that Zeppelin was essentially a big band in the States and wasn't very big in England. Is that, like, not true? No, it's not true. No. Zeppelin, I mean, they always sold a lot of albums and they were almost a cult band, no. really. But, but not really, because everyone knew about them, you know. I mean, a lot of cult bands, not everyone knows about them, but Zeppelin were, no. yeah, they were, they were big, yeah. What do, you, what, do you, what do you do when you're, you're going to run through the Zeppelin songs? I mean, do you try to exactly, exactly replicate Bonham's no, no. trump parts at all? No. Like I say, I mean, a, a lot of the songs you know anyway. Yeah. You know, they're, just, they're in here. And it's just a matter of... The best way, the way I approach it anyway is I don't actually sit and listen to the record. I'll, I'll play it the way I remember it. Yeah. And that way, you're putting in your bit as well. You know? and, and a lot of the songs now, when we listen to the record, they are different. They are quite yeah. a bit different to the way Zeppelin did them, which is good. That's the way it should be. Maybe the way Zeppelin would have done them in the 80s or something. Maybe, maybe. yeah. But, you know, we're not trying to copy what Zeppelin did. We're just, we're just using the songs, you know. We're not mm -hmm. trying to be Zeppelin. Do you, and, did you and Robert work together a lot on stage? You know, a lot of singers are really 
very tied to the drummer. And oh, yeah. he watch yeah, you for yeah. cues and everything? No, I watch him for cues. Ah. Yeah. Uh, the songs, I mean, a lot of them are very choreographed, if that's the right word, musically. Yeah. They're, they're very set. But there are points in the show when it's almost like you're in a plane and someone switches the autopilot off. And we, here we go, <laughs> you know. And you just watch him, see what he's going to do. Yeah. And, and that's when he gets fun, because everyone's watching everybody else, and it's all... <laughs> Great. Has it ever gotten totally out of control, or do you? Oh like yeah, bring it that's even better. Then. <laughs> when that happens, that's even better. I mean, it's, yeah, it does get silly. It's great. What is the, what is the new stuff you like that you've been working on for the the next album? Is like totally another level above what the yeah. first one was. Yeah, it's it's taking what that album was and just going on from mm -hmm. there. Um, it's still very embryonic at the moment, but I think yeah. from what for the stuff we've been messing about with, it's going to be mm -hmm. it's going to be really good. What do, you, what do you make of Robert as a singer, having worked with him now? Is he, you know, he's like an older guy and something. Has he, has he still got it? Oh, he's, he's, yeah, he's still got it, definitely. Yeah, I mean, it's, like I say, the times when, when the show, when we are sort of flying without autopilot, that's when, that's when he really comes out, and it's great. Yeah. yeah. What was it like playing with Paige when he came, came up on stage with you guys <laughs> at um, Hammersmith? Um, I, it was fine. I mean, in the dressing room, I met him and everything. And we shook hands, and it was great. And we did the sound check, and it was yeah. great. And then we got up on stage, and we did the show, and then we came back for the encore, and that's when Jimmy got up. Yeah. And that's when I suddenly thought, "Wow, this is this is Robert Plant and Jimmy Page, <laughs> <laughs> and this is me." <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> and the, the crowd were going completely <laughs> balmy. It was that was really good fun. Yeah, what a show! What are the best places you've played in the states so far? Um, my favourite places have been Red Rocks, definitely. Yeah. Red Rocks was fantastic. And um, I think uh, Meadowlands, yeah. New Jersey. You had never played in the stage before, had you, before no. this tour? No. Was, it, was it everything you imagined it to be, or, or less? It was, or a, it was much more than I imagined, actually. It's a lot bigger than I thought. I mean, coming yeah. from England, you know, a lot of the distances we're travelling from gig to gig are longer than it is from one end of England to the other. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> it's just... Yeah, getting a scale of the place. And yeah. I'm beginning to understand now how big it is. You know. um, but as far as the audiences go, no, they're fantastic. I yeah. mean, English audiences tend to be, they tend to sit down and want to be entertained, you know, yeah. and you have to really work. American audiences are out for a good time. Yeah. So it makes our job easier and therefore everyone has much more fun. It's just, yeah. Would there be a live album out of this, do you think? Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> That's good. What makes this tour, getting ready for this this tour coming out, different than the other tours you've done with Robert? What makes it different? This leg of the tour? Or? This leg of the tour. Mm. Um, for me, I've been to America now, yeah. <clears throat> and uh, I know what to expect. I know what the audiences are like. I know a lot of the towns. Um, it's a bit like... We didn't really go home, you know. We we just come back and we're doing another leg of the tour that we finished before. Yeah. Um, also, for me, it's quite nice because I mean I love Christmas and this is a build up to Christmas as well, <laughs> and uh, it's great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whose idea? What deal was it to <clears throat> just change the whole set around? I mean, was that something planned at the beginning of the tour? Or? Yeah, we decided to come back and do something different. Yeah. Really, I mean, the show was going really well, the last show, uh, but we thought, yeah, but. What if we did this? And what if we did that? And uh, that's what we've tried to do. It's uh, yeah. great. Good for you. Thank you very much. Tremendous. Thank you. Good luck with the tour. We're rolling. Steve. He looks good. Upstairs. He looks really good, I think. Whenever you're ready. So whose who's idea, who's idea was it to, like, in the middle of the tour like this, to just change the whole set around? Was that a band decision? or? Gee, what was that? <laughs> that was Coco Horton. Um, yeah, well, we were just wanted to do something, something different. We, we were changing the set all the way through the first yeah. leg, and we'll probably change it again and again anyway. It's just this time the whole design has changed, the yeah. whole bar is... I don't know, Robert must have come into some money or something. <laughs> <laughs> Was, is the, the, was the idea to change like the impact of the set? I mean, there are more highs and lows. Or there, I understand there's acoustic stuff in it. Yeah, the, and cookies. Um, 
Well, no, we just wanted to try some new things. As yeah. you know, each song is looked upon differently, and so if we do acoustic songs. It doesn't. Really, it's not really changing the set it dramatically. I mean, it's just yeah. using a different song. Mm. What was your What was your state of mind when you first embarked on this tour, coming to the states? I mean, did you have any idea what it was going to be like, or how the no. record would be greeted or anything? Not a clue. I've made records before, but uh, not that uh, I've done quite as well as this. Let's yeah. put it that way. Have you, have you become wealthy and bought a house in Somerset or something? <laughs> no, not exactly. I understand you've, you've taken time off and you've gone back and been writing songs and stuff. Are you like halfway through the new record or anything like that, or is it? Yeah, we're just about ready. We could record a whole record now. Really? We've got the other, other songs are there. They're ready. But you know, we'll work on different things. We haven't actually gotten to the stage where we deliberately, you know, routine a certain yeah. amount of songs. I mean, it's a bit like with Now and Zen, we had about 30 or 40 songs we could have chosen. And really? then as we started working on little bits, started moving around, and you yeah. take that little bit from there and put it in there, and then you sort of hone the whole thing down. 30 or 40 songs? Yeah. You guys are really prolific. Well, there's five of us. <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is it really a situation where the five of you can sit around and write material, or do two or three of you get together in one corner? And All in different ways. And sometimes you put on the computer and it writes it for you. You're lucky. <laughs> the best kind. Are you when you're when you're when you set out to do Zeppelin songs? Are you trying to be faithful note to note for the record, note for note to the record, or are you trying to give them your own arrangement? Or are you intimidated by them at all? Um, at first, yeah, but they are just songs, you know, mm -hmm. and and they're songs that Robert has written, and songs should grow. I wouldn't say we're deliberately um, choosing to do them exactly like Led, Led Zeppelin, because that's impossible, because yeah. Dougie's a great guitar player, uh, Jimmy Page is a great guitar player, but the two of them are different, so therefore yeah. Doug will play his way, um, I will play a certain way, Chris the drummer will play a certain way, and that all comes, that all comes across. Um, I think we play, play those songs yeah. pretty good. I think people have to try and forget, in a way, their Led Zeppelin songs. Yeah. Is there, is there a point, do you see down the road somewhere where you wouldn't even have to do them anymore? Or just I don't think we have to do yeah. them now. Well, no, of course That's not. not really the reason I didn't mean to put it like that. But cause is, is there a point, do you think, where it would just all be like new material, or would you just enjoy still doing the Zeppelin stuff? Well, it's a bit difficult. I mean, we could have done all, we could have, you see, this tour, we could have just done Now and Zen and a whole bunch of songs, The other, some of the other 30 or 40 songs. Yeah. But I don't think people coming that would confuse people in a way. I remember seeing Genesis doing the whole of Lamb Lies Down Broadway <laughs> before it came out, right. and it did confuse people. And I think part of doing a, a gig is that people enjoy themselves, and the band enjoy themselves. So we do songs that we enjoy playing, yeah. um, and those songs can be chosen from anywhere. I mean, the last tour we did. Uh, Dimples by John Lee Hooker, we did Back mm -hmm. in the USSR a couple of times, we did Break On Through the Doors track, you know, we can, yeah. you can choose almost any song, as long as you put it across, but I think people who are coming to see Robert Plant, the reason why they're going to see him sing and the band perform is for certain things for all his history beforehand. Yeah. And this hot new band he's got, obviously. Sorry. And this hot new band he's got. Right now. <laughs> That's very kind. Naturally. Of when you when you guys are sitting around trying to write stuff, is, do you do you listen to anything in particular for like inspiration, or are you just all pretty? We listen to everything in particular uh -huh. for inspiration. Yeah, you can. You, that's part of the songwriting process is you sit down and we just play each other. We're always swapping cassettes, so saying, there's this little bit of this that we like. So therefore, that's the type of feel. You know, it's, uh -huh. it's been done from you know from that's from time immemorial. Yeah. I mean, my favourite quote is from T.S. Eliot, so sort it of says, uh, immature artists plagiarise, mature artists steal. And uh, I've just grown up. The first guy who's ever quoted T.S. Eliot to us. This is, <laughs> this is a first. Oh, I'm very pleased. Now you've been on, on the road with Robert all this time, what are the most interesting things you've learned about him? About him? Um, Pretty boring. No, I'm not saying that. I think I'll quote Shakespeare now. Thank you. Uh, that's a terrible question. I don't think I'll ask that one. Well, what's, <laughs> he, what's he like to be out on the road with? I mean, is he a good boss? You know, does he buy dinner for the guys and stuff? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I wouldn't say. Has he ever bought dinner? Yeah. I see. Oh, right. Yeah. 
Um, it's it's very easy going. It's it's no. like it's it's a real band band, and that's where that's where it has to be. I wouldn't regard Robert as the boss. No. You know, I mean, I'm more more the accountant. <laughs> <laughs> Gee. Well, he's trained to be an accountant, and there's some things that just will not leave the blood. Right? <laughs> and somebody has to do it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> is, he, is he what you would you envision when you first got like the call from like, Virgin that this guy wants to meet you? And... I didn't get the call from Virgin. That's what was so weird. I got the call from Robert. Directly? I didn't yeah, that. as Virgin were trying to ring me, I was on the phone to Robert, because it took Robert a quarter of an hour for him to convince me that he was Robert. <laughs> Because I had Led Zeppelin II playing very loudly in my bedsit, and I was trying to convert the payphone so the ten p's would go in one end and still come out the other end, you know, the other end, and that way I won. You know, you just keep using one ten p, and that's about all I had. And there's this guy comes on the phone with this brummy accent trying to convince me he's Robert Plant. So I thought, no, I don't, I don't believe this is a wine. You gave him a hard time. Is that what you're saying? Uh, no, I didn't give it. I was trying to find. I was trying to guess who it was, but I couldn't quite play. It was, it was a terrible Brummy accent as well. I was trying to work out exactly where it, <laughs> who it could have been, but eventually he convinced me. So and then was so we organised to meet, and uh, then we got drunk for a few months. And after we've managed to do that well, we started writing some songs. And it went off swimmingly from there. And... Uh, it's been up and down. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the, the, it started swimmingly. It's been <laughs> gradually going downhill <laughs> ever since. I mean, we've, the first song we wrote was "Till Cool One," which yeah. was not a bad start. <laughs> and um, you wrote a couple other songs that day, right? Yeah, it's "Till Cool One" and "White Clean and Neat" were the first songs we wrote. Yeah. And that was, as I say, that was a bad start. Yeah. When could the when could the next album be done? Is there a schedule so far? Do you know when the next LP will be out? And yeah, there's a schedule. Um, sorry. sorry, English <laughs> rather than American. Um, yeah, there is there is a vague schedule, but it's it's got to be. I mean, this next the next record because the band was during this tour was suddenly realised just how good this band is, mm -hmm. which I don't think anybody realised. None of us had realised what it was, and it's now. It really has become the sum of the parts of, of bigger, of sort of greater than the sum of the individual parts. You know, the yeah. whole is much greater, um, which gives you puts a lot more pressure on you to make the definitive album. I mean, what we're aiming for is Pet Sounds or um, or Sergeant Pepper. You know, uh, I mean, I love Nan's and I think we did yeah. really well under the circumstances. But looking back at it now, I mean. I, if anybody bought the, there was a CD single of um, of Ship of Fools, yeah. and there were a couple of live tracks on that, and they sound better than the than the than the album version to me. Yeah. And it's that what we've got to capture that excitement, you know, rather than the clinically going into a studio and go right. We shall now listen to bell noises for the next twelve hours. <laughs> I know, I've done it, I've been there. <laughs> and uh, so this time we just, we'll go, we're going to go away, do it the old style, go away, get our heads together, yeah. man, <laughs> write, go hand to our country idol and write some s songs. And then back, re rehearse them, might do even a few real small gigs mm -hmm. and just play all the new material and then go and record it. Is this going to be, be the same easy. production team working on this? Or? I don't know, um, it, very likely. Very likely, Tim Palmer is in Switzerland as we speak, working with somebody very, very important indeed, but he won't tell me who. Okay. That's a big secret. Okay, possibly. So now be. everybody knows. <laughs> God. Do, the, do you, uh, have you have you found like favorite cities in the states when, when you come over here that you think are like really hot for this particular band? Is like Chicago or Robert Plant town? Or? Oh, Chicago is yeah. Well, there's certain places I enjoy myself an awful lot, um, and certain places where I didn't. Maybe because I had a cold or something. You yeah. can't blame the city. I mean, I certainly enjoyed Chicago a lot. Yeah. And New Orleans is a fabulous place. Yeah. Did you get to get out and around, see bands and stuff while you were down there, musicians? Um, yeah, we we saw we. Uh, so a number of old blues guys down in New Orleans, Snook Seaglin, people like that. Wow, great. He's superb. You can see where Jimmy got it all from. <laughs> <laughs> Cut. <laughs> okay. right, so you sort of in the States is okay, I mean, is it what you pictured it to be? It's, um, it's much, much better than I thought it was. As a place, it's a wonderful yeah. place. There's some places that you just ne are never, 
never would have thought could be like that. You know, just Boulder, Colorado. No. Now, I met some people from Boulder who were really, really pleased they came from Boulder. I met them in England. <laughs> and I look up in this map and I go, bloody hell, it's right next to Bumfuck, Kentucky, or whatever it is. And I look, I look down there and I think, why is he so pleased he comes from Boulder? And I went to Boulder and I know why they're so happy now. I mean, if you go at the right time of year, you could yeah. sunbathe down the bottom of the mountain and then go skiing later on. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. You didn't look these people up while you were there, though, right? No, they're yeah. assholes. <laughs> <laughs> That's what put me off bold, you see. <laughs> That's good and for me. You spoke briefly earlier about you know, trying to milk that 10p for, uh, for, uh, on, the phone, on your phone, and now also yeah. you're touring the Robert Plant. Is that like, how did that make you feel? That's, uh, Better, probably. <laughs> yeah, it made me feel... I mean, actually, I haven't had time to sort of really to sit back and wait for, you know, and to sit back and understand what has happened in the last two or three years. I mean, yeah. it's been, in a way, I feel a bit cheated from missing the the rise. Yeah. You know, as you, because like, if you were in some band, I'm trying to think of a good example. Working your way to the top. That's right. Yeah. So as you work, everything's getting better. You do each gig, and yeah. it's going to get a little bit larger. If you start right up there somewhere. Then the pressure and maybe and the excitement factor is a little bit harder to regain, yeah. you know, or to or to come across. Everything is suddenly already so important, yeah. and in many ways, um, life was easier with the 10p, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but less interesting, perhaps. But yes, less interesting. And you got the baby now, right? Yeah, we've got the baby. Now. What could possibly happen next? I wonder. Emily, <laughs> Emily Margaret Francis Johnston. Wow. One last question: What makes this leg of the tour? Different than any other, any other parts of it. This one's the fun one. There was, you know, there are no, there's no particular commercial or um, what's the other, maybe accountants' reason. <laughs> no accountants' reason for doing this leg of the yeah. tour, apart from the fact that we're all having so much fun. And the last month, of the, the last month, of the last, the first leg of the yeah. tour of the US was so much fun that we just could not turn down the opportunity of being able to do it this one more time. And also the show's so good, let's do it, let's, let's give everybody a chance to go and see it. And then we'll do the next album and then we'll come back with another thing. Yeah. But I think it's, you know, it's, it's, it bears repetition. Are you going to go, when you go back to, to England, are you going to be like playing over there after Christmas or something? Are you going to keep touring or are you just going to go right back in the studio? We're going back, well, as I, as I said, we might, after we've routined the songs for the album, yeah. we might then do some unannounced club dates yeah. so we can get to the stage where we've played the songs in front of an audience several times. Because, like, every, most nights we'll take a tape away of the gig, listen to it, and um, for about five minutes, then throw it out the window and get drunk. Mm. <laughs> we go back, listen to it, and you can sort of take certain little things um, you know, like Charlie will play a bass pool somewhere, which then we can work in. Now, yeah. those are the sort of things you only build up over a sort of three or four month tour. Yeah. Now, you, it's, it's a shame you have to go and record the album before you can go and tour with the material, you see, because yeah. it's, it's invariably going to be, if you can catch it at the right moment, if you can catch just the right moment to record it, then it should be, you know, it should be yeah. very easy and get all the excitement and, and the freshness and it yeah. will come across on record. I think people get so bogged down in studios, they yeah. spend two or three years recording an album, and it still comes out sounding dull as ditch water. Mm. And you're sort of a studio guy saying that too, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I spent a long, long time in studios. Yeah. But, um, and some of those times were fun, and some of them times, yeah. you know, it's horses for horses, whatever it takes. What is, what is the, Robert is always going around saying, well, I've still got a couple of good notes left, and on a good night I can still hit them, but I mean, he sounds pretty good, would you say that? What's, what's the exciting thing about working with him as a singer? I mean, it separates him from other singers. Well, as a singer, I think he's singing better than he ever has done in his life, because uh, having sort of made a little study, <laughs> as one does, <laughs> of the accountant, um, <laughs> he said, it, when he, I mean, it, I love the sound of his voice when we first started singing with Led Zeppelin, yeah. you know, the, the sound of the voice on Led Zeppelin 1 and 2. Now, Robert reckons that was too forced, mm. and, he, and maybe a singer, singer, would would say that you know I mean maybe you ought to ask Frank Sinatra if you can get hold of him what yeah. he thought of Led Zeppelin one and two, and see what he see whether he says oh I'm afraid the voice is a bit strained, 
<laughs> so then he starts really singing, and that came out through um, no, Led Zeppelin IV, House of the Holy, Physical yeah. Graffiti, um, and d constantly developing style, but he was shying away from the real high stuff because he yeah. thought that's what's forced. But now he's actually got much more of a vocal technique and he's singing high again. Yeah. And he's, so he's got complete the full range and control of it. Yeah. And it, it's a real pleasure to work with. I mean, it's. Because he sometimes hit notes that send shivers up your spine. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And when Dougie and, uh, and Robert is, are on form, the two of them together, it really is. There, was, there have been some moments when uh -huh. I, then I forget to play the piano. I just stand back and go, ah, really marvelous. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Is that good for you? Yes, it is. That Thank was terrific. Right. That was terrific. What a pro. Let's go. Roll it. Roll it. Speed. Okay. Action. All right. So, is it hardest for you of all the guys in the band when it comes time to play Led Zeppelin stuff? Do you feel like you're like really on the spot, or is everybody very supportive? Um, I don't know if it's hardest for me. I mean, it's. I'd say it's hard for Chris as well. You know, feeling yeah. drummer's greatest bonzo was. You know, but. Um, I don't know, I, I try not to think about it at all because I don't approach it in terms of competition or comparison, yeah. you know, for me it's just, I mean, I like the songs and they're great guitar parts to play, obviously, so I just enjoy myself, I try not to worry about it too much at all. Yeah. Is this stuff that you like knew in your blood, I mean, you could just walk on stage and play it automatically, was it the stuff you grew up on? It wasn't stuff I grew up on, I mean, I didn't really, I wasn't that aware of Led Zeppelin when I was younger, mm. probably until I was in my early teens, and someone lent me a couple of albums, and yeah. that was good stuff. And then I kind of, but I was never a great fan, and I kind of forgot about it for a while. And then when I met Robert, we started going over some Zeppelin stuff, and it was like, oh, let's have a go at this song. I said, oh, what's that then? You know, so it was. <laughs> <laughs> what did he say to that? Um, they didn't bat an eyelid, you know, he didn't seem at all surprised. You know. <laughs> I don't know why. Could you tell us the story of like meeting him? How did you come to be summoned into his presence? Well, I've known Chris Blackwell, the drummer, for a long, long time. We've been mm -hmm. in bands together for about nine years or so. And uh, Phil had met Robert, and they'd been working together. And Phil knew Chris, and so I got involved via that. Oh, excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Just continue as if nothing were happening. Okay. I'm looking for a guitarist. <laughs> Nothing's happening. That's a phone bar. I never had one. Carry on. <laughs> But anyway, I'm to make you nervous, Doug. Oh, thank you, Robert. I thought you'd never would. So you were saying about Robert, the kind of guy he is. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, well, you can scribble that. That's his ego. Wasn't that the question? It's enormous. That is ego. I won't ask you about him. <laughs> what's, what's the new set? Can you describe what the new set's going to be like without giving it all away? I mean, is it like a total revamp? Well, it's going to be more dynamic, no. I'd say. In what way? In terms of, I don't know. I mean, how do you describe dynamics? No, it's a matter of... I don't know, there's more colours to it, it's, it's like further across the spectrum, I mean that's the way I feel about it. Yeah. It's just got a bit more colour to it, and because we're more mature as a band, it's, um, it, just, it just feels a lot punchier. Yeah. Things are feeling really good at the moment. Is the stage set like much more elaborate, or things going up and down and moving through the, the air or anything like that? Or? It's uh, only friends of the group. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> Go. <laughs> well, it's, what can I say about the stage set? It's going to be great. It looks amazing. Who it's, it's going to be one hell of a show, this one. Who, who designed it? Was it like a group thing to design the stage set, or did one person decide to design it? Or? We started taking notes on how, the way we thought it should go towards the end of the last tour, so everyone's had a little bit of input into it. Yeah. Is this, was, was you, in your experience, you said that like you didn't really hear a lot of Zeppelin when you were growing up. Do you think they were... I mean, it's always been said that they were really, really big in the States, not so big in England. Would you say that's more or less true or, or um, not? Well, they certainly have got a, a profile in England as well, but it's nothing like the sort of feeling you get when you come over here. I mean, when I, I come over to the States for the first time yeah. this year, and you, you get a feeling for what it was all about, you know, in terms of the perspective that the American Zeppelin Zeppelin, yeah. you know, it, it is a very different thing, but then the English are very different people from the Americans. Yeah. In that way, I mean, the English are very, very cool anyway, so you don't kind of, they don't come straight out with things, yeah. the way they seem to over here, which is great, it's very refreshing for me. Yeah. Well, as a guitar player, what do you think it is about Zeppelin's music that has kept it 
I mean, in demand so long. Songs. I mean, it's basically songs, and the fact that it's just the chemistry of those particular four people who are all very talented. Yeah. And uh, I guess there was just a certain chemistry there, and there was a great songwriting team. Do you think on the, on the show, the way it is now, revamped, does it give you ch guys a chance to really step out more, or to take off from songs, or is it arranged like that? Um, yeah. It's, uh... It's, it, it's very, very dynamic, the way we're approaching the material, and the way we're presenting it. And it's just, it's just a, very, a very, very good feeling, which gets better all the time. Yeah. Are you, guys, are you having a good time on this tour? Uh, well, I mean, we've been, been out here a week, and we've had such a laugh already. <laughs> we had a great time on the last tour, you know, but this time, like, the feeling, I mean, this is going to be the one, you know. <laughs> or maybe the one after this will be the one. We yeah. think this is going to be the one. Great. Yourself? Um, one of the questions about playing with Robert. <laughs> yeah, okay. You don't expect them to tell you the truth, do you? <clears throat> Probably not, but Never. we frequently not use hard. lies if we can get them, yeah. Is it, is it a, this is <coughs> very hard to ask while you're standing there, but is it, is it compared to all the singers you've played with, let's put it that way, mm -hmm. is there anything special about playing with Robert? I mean, is there a special thrill of just being on stage with him, would you say? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> What can he say? I mean, he's... I mean, he's a musician. I mean, just the way he sings, and his voice fits into the band. Is he, is he, like, unlike any other singer that you're aware of? Absolutely. He's unique. You know, there's, there's, there's no, no one else in really like him, you know, although people try. There's lots yes, of people we've noticed that. Robert, yeah. You know, but, you know, I've, I'm playing with a real guy. <laughs> it's amazing. There's no one like him. Good. Well put. That was good, wasn't it? I don't know what to say. I don't know, but he's standing here. He can't run the f camera into the mirror and see all the faces there. It's a youth opportunities program here, I see. How are we doing? Okay, interest that up. You want to want, put it on with just put a clap in here. Stand by. Yeah, wait, wait, wait. Just roll. Okay. Uh, stand We're by. About to begin. Are we both rolling? I'm rolling. This is the exciting part. All right, quiet. Okay, go. Technical thing. So this is Spinal Tap. <laughs> this is just great. It is. Though. This is to, to the film industry. This is Spinal. Yeah, sorry. We're sorry, inventing guys. television here. The, who, to, whose idea? When did the idea come to you to like take this tour and completely rehabilitate it and, or rehash it and put new stuff in and just go out again with a completely new show, essentially? Well, it's obvious if you. Uh, <clears throat> it's obvious if you're going to play some of the areas where you've been before that you don't just go back and do the same yeah. thing. It's a bit like you don't want to end up doing a residency at the Philadelphia Spectrum, but it being the same every. Yeah. month or so. Um, and remember that when all of us started individually actually playing and writing songs and stuff, all we ever wanted to do was play. Yeah. So if you go to a town once, it doesn't mean to say that you've actually satisfied your urge to play. You know, you can do yeah. 50 dates, 100 dates, B.B. King plays 320 dates a year. So the idea of changing it is just things go stale. Did you have some ideas from when you played over here before that there were certain songs maybe the audience wanted to hear or there were certain ways to well, approach you know, the American you, audience? Or? You, you know the answer to that. I mean, uh, <clears throat> Arsenal. I don't really <laughs> want to um, compromise myself too much. I basically just want to play what I want to play. Yeah. And um, there are one or two songs still left in the catalogue of, of songs that I've co-written that I could play in the future. But right now the whole structure of this seems to be getting a bit more... Um, you know, you have to pace a set, you have to balance it from the minute that you start yeah. to the minute that you actually get into the car, lie back and find that you're sitting on somebody's lap by accident <laughs> or whatever it is. So you've got to actually build it up properly and the first couple of gigs on every tour, first three, ten, fifteen oh. gigs, are always trying to get it right. Yeah. And this new set is going to be one of those sort of trial and error jobs, but there are seven or eight new songs in it. There's the acoustic stuff too, I gather, right? Yeah. Well, I don't know whether the... <coughs> I don't know whether acoustic stuff is appropriate in a way, because I don't feel particularly acoustically minded right now. However, the songs that I've chosen to do is a very special one to, for me, and I've sung it a few times, I'm really enjoying it now. Can you tell us what it is? It's called Going to California. Ah, great. And uh, I really like the song, you know. Yeah. I remember like, writing the lyrics in a barn in Worcestershire <laughs> and thinking one day I can have a coat like Ozzy Osbourne to do this. <laughs> <laughs> and thinking that, you know, it's a nice song. <laughs> but the acoustic approach to music really has to be considered 
right now. Because yeah. if, you, if we're making records like Heaven Knows and Tall Cool One, maybe it's good to bring that element in. Yeah. You know? uh, musical color, I remember Doug was talking about when I was holding the baseball bat over there. <laughs> making sure you got it right. But it's right, you know, to change yeah. it around a bit. Might be nice to even write some 1988 acoustic material. Yeah. You know. How would that differ from, like, 60s acoustic material? Would there be... Well, going to California, I think, um, we wrote in about 1972. <clears throat> and my state of mind has obviously changed, or the whole course of my thought has has veered one way and another. Yeah. Things affect you through life. I've had a few knocks, and I've had a lot of good fun as well. I, <clears throat> I don't know whether I can feel so kind of reflective as I did then. No. You know, um, Why the not? mountains and the canyons start to tremble and shake as the children of the sun begin to awake. Now I can really, I remember that feeling when I wrote that, and I don't know whether it's really relevant to think that way anymore. Yeah. You know. How was, how, was the, how was the band come along? I mean, since the first date you all played together in the States, was that a traumatic experience, and has it gotten better? Come over here. Come here. Come here. Come here. I want you to come here. Come and show these people. Look. We keep on about New Age, man. This is it. This is New Age. This is, this new age? The, this, this is Doug. He was okay a few minutes ago, but you can see he's gone through some terrible change. There's something to me. There's a bit of a, a, bit of a change. To me? No, that's... I know. I was wearing that in about 1969. Wait, Victoria. Girls together, outrageous. Meteors, you around? Yeah. <laughs> Simon Le Bon used to wear one of them, I think. He is Simon Le Bon. <laughs> have you, what have you heard of Simon Le Bon recently? Yeah, that's only thing Simon Le Bon's good for. I put our stage set up. Said he looted another friend. <laughs> uh oh. Uh, the band, yeah. Well, obviously the tension's one getting one to one everyone. One more time. Okay. But please, go ahead. And please. And you can't, you can't really lose that, can you? I mean, how many roadies do you see like that? He's straight from the Yes tour. You can tell. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Trevor. Uh, yeah, well, we were a bit more relaxed together. I mean, yeah. there was a lot of pressure and a lot of un the unknown was a terrible thing for everybody. Yeah. And however much people like my learned friend and I and everybody else around said, it's great fun. There was obviously fear and trepidation. And within the first week. Um, they were doing that Madison Square Garden bash and all that sort of thing and walking out into this <coughs> almost uh, selective preferred environment where everybody was waiting for Godot yeah. or not, you know. But it was, it was a pretty uh, tough task for them. And I think once they realised that it doesn't matter how good or bad it is, as so long as you actually go about it honestly, yeah. that's all that counts, you know. There's a little bit of compromise. I mean, I never thought I'd have seen uh, Phil Johnston walking around with Roy Rogers' horse on his back. <coughs> but he's done it, you know, and he, he doesn't mind. He's coming out of the closet. Wow. So does that. I've been out of it since school days. <laughs> I know you have, yeah. But at school you gave it some welly. <laughs> So have you, so have you always, have you ever before been this prolific? I mean, you can go off with these guys and write like 20 songs a day or whatever it is you're writing, and you just took some time off and wrote a bunch of stuff. Is this a new burst of sort of well, material? Well, obviously, yeah, as, we, as we're getting loose or whatever it is together, um, we just do whatever we want to do. I mean, it's maybe it's one of those periods where everybody's finally feeling that there is an outlet for what they've got to do. Yeah. You know, maybe maybe they didn't have the facility before to say, I want to do this there, and what about playing that there? Because if you're in a different situation where you're not writing songs, you're actually playing covers or something yeah. like that, or you're trying to aim at a different market, and then suddenly you turn a corner and it all becomes... The whole thing becomes cohesive, and you meet all these guys, and you get your wildest dreams out musically. Yeah. I mean, that's what happened to me with Zep. Really, was to turn a corner and to have a charge and energy coming from places that I never yeah. imagined. When I was in the band of Joy with Bonzo, <coughs> there wasn't really the same facility to combine the blues with something that was mildly psychedelic. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm not being funny either. But uh, like Dazed and Confused and stuff like that was a, a, a kind of blues and um, late 60s psychedelic approach and how many more times had its moments and stuff. Yeah. Likewise now with this environment and these guys, <coughs> uh, I can bring in the rock and roll side of it, the, you know, the kind of Ralph Nielsen and the Chancellor's scream approach, you know, <laughs> while the, the technology and some of the new fan um, musical movements coming from 
Phil or Doug or mm. Charlie or Chris, you know. Do you so it's a good combination because I've got all this kind of root rock and roll and root yeah. blues stuff. And um, Phil's coming in with a more melodic, very, uh, <coughs> well, not very, but like a Beach Boys side or a melodic yeah. side, a song, song side. And although uh, Zeppelin wrote a lot of songs, or a lot of songs came out with choruses, it was a kind of accident, nothing was planned. Now we're actually looking to write songs that are songs. Yeah. When you're doing the Zeppelin stuff now, do you feel that you're in a position to like open it up and build on it? or? Yeah, it's interpretation, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, it's just how it felt when we were re rehearsing. It would be a good idea to do this or stop it there and do that, you know? Yeah. Uh, I think the original recorders, nothing will ever be as good as them yeah. for what they are. But this is a live situation in 1988, <coughs> and it probably shows even more respect to them not to try and make it exactly the same or not to be mm. that, you know, make it that holy. What is, it, what is the stage show going to be like? Are there like bombs going off and fog banks or anything like that? Or, um, I mean, the set. No, we're not thrash metal, or we haven't quite got round to that. It's more like a Roy Harper show, actually. <laughs> really? It starts really slow and everybody goes to sleep. <laughs> Uh, matter of fact, I saw Roy Harper about a month ago, and he was stunning. He was great. Hats yeah. off to Harper. He really <laughs> is carrying that kind of wah flag. Yeah. Still, he's excellent, excellent. But our show isn't really like Roy's because we can't afford the stools. <laughs> uh, but uh, it's um, no flashes, no bangs, just a little bit of uh, fun, I think. You know, there's a little sense of humour in the stage set. Yeah. And the lighting designer um, is stunning, I think. But it's not going to be like a Michael Jackson thing or anything, right? I can't mm -hmm. afford all that crap. <laughs> Bloody hell. <laughs> and besides, I think it detracts from the fact that we're staggering around on Cuban heels. I think it's quite <laughs> funny to see the artists slip and fall. Uh, but Kenny Mednick has done a remarkable job with the lights. Yeah. You know, and. Uh, and the whole thing is kind of in it created some kind of sympathy between the way I feel and the kind of post-summer of love feeling that's around right now in the band. Could you explain that, the post-summer of love feeling? Yeah, it was kind of love, peace, tranquility, smiles. Really? Yeah, I think so. All that and no drugs is great. <laughs> what's, what's causing this? It's a newfound relationship. Yeah. This has got to be the best time. It's like your second date, yeah. you know? Second date. What is it? You've got a new video completed, also. I understand. Is this correct? We'll have it completed by the time you finish filming tonight. We'll be in well. Okay. Good. The, how, how do you how do you trace the course of your videos from the beginning? Was there? Do you see yourself following an ascending line of? No. 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 I just don't think that. I, I think I'm a terrible actor, and I'm terrible at trying to be sincere visually about anything. I mean, I can sing a song. No. But. Uh, <clears throat> You put me in a situation, unless I ride a horse or swim, <laughs> I'm all right at doing that too, because I haven't actually got to deliver anything. Yeah. But what have we done is knowing full well that very many musicians are terrible actors or terrible at trying to put the point over with sincerity. Yeah. There's no point in even trying to do that, really. So um, the videos have just been plays upon wacky themes, I guess. Mm -hmm. I mean, Heaven Knows was quite a wacky... Uh, Video, but at the same time, <coughs> it was a bit far flung and far removed from everyday rock and roll promotion. Yeah. I mean, I, write, I love the idea of doing videos. Uh, you know, maybe you need a bit more makeup now and again. But, uh, <laughs> but what, it, right. what is this one all about? Is there like a theme to it or funny costumes, horses? Well, I think it's time for a kind of uh, new age video, a post summer of love video. We'll make it up as we go along, <laughs> but just piece it together with some sellotape. <laughs> But you're closer to it than that, aren't you? Can you tell us anything about no, it? No, that's about it. Oh, really? I yeah. thought, oh, I thought it was like... Oh, no, I, was about, I wouldn't tell you a fib. Well, I would, but that's not one of them. <laughs> have you got, have the you got crew are all talking. What's going on? It's Can not a tea break. A what happened? There's a cricket uh, in here. There's a cricket. So. Okay. Roll it. Quiet. And... Okay. Okay. So in, in your travels around the country, have you had a chance to like take off after the show and go see <laughs> anything new and exciting? Have you come upon any... Yeah. Have you discovered any bands? I found northern New Mexico, and that's the most exciting thing that I've come across. No. Even more exciting than the balancing act and everybody else on IRS records. <laughs> uh, 
I just love northern New Mexico and all the smiles inside it, you know? Great people there. And in the middle of northern New Mexico last week, I saw one of the greatest things in America. And his name is Jesse Colin Young. He's out there? He's out there. Wow. So am I. What was he doing? We were both out there. <laughs> he was singing in a club in Santa Fe. Had you never been there before? Or is this no. Different? Oh, really? How did you come up I've been to it? Santa Fe three times this year, but I've never been to that club. And um, he was stunning. His voice was incredible. Really? Yeah. Is he recording or anything? Yeah, I think so. But, I mean, uh, I think he's probably made his choice as to whether or not he's going to play this game or, no. or any play upon this theme. And I think, I mean, he had a full house and he, was, he sang so brilliantly. Wow. What yeah. appeals to you about that area out there? Is it just the desertedness of it all or well no I just think it's it's not too um, disturbed by the Anglo is no. it you know and uh, it's rather like you know I mean Morocco's got hints of that too uh, <clears throat> I don't really know too much about the people there I mean I've read lots of things about them recently about the Spanish people and about the Pueblos no. and stuff but I mean, I just go there and I just find it a very, I get it, there's a great empathy yeah. within me for it and for that place. And uh, that's kind of better than going and watching a band play when you've finished dancing around. Yeah, you're right. Uh, we were in Baton Rouge last night and Silas Hogan was playing there over the weekend and I wanted to go and see him. Mm. He recorded for the same label, XLO Records, that uh, Lazy Lester and London yeah. Slim did and Slim Harper, who more or less created a lot of the early British rhythm and blues catalog, oh. you know. Are you often in the position of like, going to the guys in the band and, say, and introducing them to stuff like this? Mm. Like, this is Lazy Lester, sit down and listen to it. Yeah, and they look at me with an old-fashioned look and all <laughs> say, well, yeah, but we've just got to go to this place, you know. <laughs> There's only so much... Pr we'd be crazy to just keep on preaching, and, and uh, I'm afraid that when I do, they start whistling my way. <laughs> And I go, oh, sorry. <laughs> well, if but, nobody listens to this stuff, it'll die out, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I don't know. I mean, the garage, all the garage punk, the Knickerbockers and 13th floor yeah. elevators and stuff, I mean, there's a lot of people listening to that still. Yeah. You know? It'd be nice to do some stuff like that next time around. What, would, what do you think the next time around will be like? It sounds like the material that you've done so far for the next album is like light years ahead of the stuff that was on Now and Zen. Well, I mean, that's not really the case. I mean, <clears throat> everything's so different. You can't really pick a theme and hang on to it because if we've never done it before, if I've never done it before, been with anybody who has, no. you can just write anything and it can just go all over the place. And maybe that's a bit of a problem because in the end, your theme, or you, if you, if you want to have some kind of central theme through the thing, to hold it all together, then with a, with a relationship that's this new, it's hard to hold that there because you go, yeah. there, let's do that, yeah, why don't we try that, and listen to that, and acoustic, and Arabic, and... Yeah, and Bulgarian. And sure Northern Santa Fe, yeah. yeah. Did you, I wanted to ask you about uh, Tall Cool and the, the Coke connection, if you wanted to talk about it. Because Neil Young just... taking drugs in the... <laughs> He's Coca -Cola so tweed connection. in the yeah. <laughs> In, in, in regard to like the, the Neil Young video that came out, that thing about people sort of selling their music for uh -huh. you know, commercial sponsorship, do you feel strongly about that or do you not care? Or do you think well, it's a bogus uh, issue? I think you have to be realistic about it. I mean, I've got a career. Mm. By the grace of God, I've got a career that's looking pretty good. You know, and it's taken a lot of hard work to get to the point that we are strong enough and capable enough of actually going back and playing uh, 10 months into the life of an album, realistically, yeah. you know? <clears throat> so if we're going to do that, I'd rather I'd like to catch the attention of some people who used to know what I did and have given up now and watch a ball game, you know? Yeah. And say, so, oh, Plenty went soft, and did Big Log and uh, Sea of Love and stuff like that. <clears throat> and if they happen to be watching the Lakers or something like that, and the video come and the, the promo comes on. I mean, that promo was a, an RP yeah. promo. It, there wasn't a word spoken. It was like, this is tall, cool one, and, and there's your bottle of coke. I'm getting across to a lot more people. I don't have to wallow about how nice this beer is, yeah. you know, or, or pull on a cigarette or anything like that. What I was doing was broadening the potential of getting across to a, a wider audience, and basically, that's what I'm, yeah. my life and career has been all about, you know, without 
putting my art in the barrel and being the next one on the line, you know. Yeah. So it was a compromise, and I do, I do accept that Neil's absolutely right, you know. But I wanted to do it because I wanted to do it because I don't do these things lightly. It takes yeah. me two years of farting around to get the thing going. So when I get it going, if I've got an opportunity of reaching a sports audience or somebody who watches dirty movies at two mm. o'clock in the morning on the TV, then I want to be there too. Mm. So you think it's like more <coughs> offensive if like Genesis does it for American beer and then admits that they, they hate American beer anyway? Well, it's, I, don't, I, I can't really comment on other people because yeah. you know, I've never been one to criticize anybody for doing anything at all. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> but I might do it for a hotel chain in Boulder, Colorado, where the beds are really nice. <laughs> <laughs> We're in Santa Fe. Can you... we stop and change things, please? Sure. All right. Go do it. Okay. All right. Is it the same? There we go. There we go. Is it the same buzz? Is it the same thrill? Well, it can't be exactly the same, obviously, but it's still enjoyable now getting out there. It's still enjoyable. Well, <clears throat> I've become a kind of media whore. Am I really? <laughs> Flogging this career of mine, and I must be enjoying it. I, mean, <laughs> I, I could stay home and just make the records and go, oh, golly, I can't do that. But, so many do. Yeah. Well, they don't anymore. Steve Winwood, I saw him about three years ago, and he, he was like, no, no, I don't really want to do that. Now you can't <laughs> even right. stop. You know, yeah. I mean, you have your moments, and when you've got them moments, you've got to go. Yeah. And uh, I enjoy it. I probably, th I think I enjoy it more now. Yeah. Uh, I probably, in those way back, I was probably in the same position as Doug and Chaps, because every time I turned a corner, I was in the middle of this growing, this thing. That, and Zeppelin, not only did Zeppelin grow, but the whole capacity for bands to play in really big venues grew. Yeah. The Who and uh, <coughs> Stones to a degree, you know. And it, it was growing at the same time as our popularity. The whole thing got bigger and bigger and bigger and the capacities and the venues changed and the whole kind of Dick Clark Roadshow phenomena yeah. of performance changed, so uh, it was enormous and I was a bit intimidated. Now I really enjoy it and I, I watch it, you know, and now is what it's all about to me. Yeah. But I really enjoy it now. And you seem to be providing something that you're filling some sort of void out there in the national musical consciousness. Do you have that feeling too? That there's something lacking that you're providing? Uh, I think you'd have to have a terrible ego to think that you were doing anything really that special. I mean, basically, you're a box of chocolates. You know? <laughs> I mean, it's true, you are, you know, <clears throat> you're an extra 10 gallons in the gas tank. Yeah. You know, if somebody wants to go see their girlfriend far away, they can do that, or they can go to a concert, you know? I mean, even, even though you're still doing Zeppelin stuff, there's not even the slightest hint of it's like an oldies act or a revival or a comeback or anything. I mean, you some, somehow... Well, every morning's a comeback. <laughs> you know, I mean, really, for anybody, where, wherever they've come from, it's like, oh, this is another one, then, eh? But uh, I think... Uh, I think this is a very vital time, and you've got to do it while you can. Yeah. Do you think there's a good period for music generally? Oh. I mean, it's like 20 years ago, there was a lot of stuff that seemed to be new, maybe because we were all much younger then. Well, we're all under the yoke, Kurt. Mm. We're, all of us, we're under that yoke. And the acceptance capacity on, you know, I can't do this really. <clears throat> because, you know, you start going into the politics of what allows music to be what it is. And basically now it's corporations, you know, yeah. advertising, sponsorship, and getting your record on the radio. There are bands around who are, are so good. Yeah. That I have actually sit on the road in New England and places I've seen bands playing in clubs who are great. They make a record, it comes out on some dicky label, mm. and uh, a major won't sign them because they won't take the chance because they think they'll be throwing money away because they won't get it on the radio. You know the game, yeah. and it's crap. It's always been the same. It's um, this is just another period where people who've been around for more than a year can actually look at it and take some perspective. No. It's, it's seldom that a phenomenon will come along and grab the industry by the balls and say, whatever you do, this is what it is. And this thing is so powerful that everybody, audiences and the media and everybody, clutch it. No. Maybe R.E.M. did that with Life's Rich Pageant, you know, where the usual run of things couldn't hold it back. It just went on its own accord, and that was great. No. What is it that you like so much about R.E.M.? Is it the lyrics or...? Uh... Well, <laughs> yeah, try working them out, yeah. <laughs>
But no, no, that's a, that's a prime example and probably one of the few examples of um, getting through without playing all the games. I find it really silly, you know, that there are two different forms of radio that create a chart. Yeah. It's absurd. If you don't make CHR radio, your record doesn't get in the chart. And if you don't get the record so far up the chart by radio play and so on, then you're... Where are you, you know? True. You know, I mean, you, you know what it's all about. And it's really kind of... But sometimes the greatest thing around never even raises its head. Yeah, and true. It's a shame. But that's the way of all flesh. Is there finally going to be a showdown between you and David Coverdale where you're going to blow him off the stage or something? Is it, is it building up to that? Has this been orchestrated? Or? I'd have to have a lot of Brussels sprouts to do that. <laughs> but uh, I, don't, I think David and I go back a long, long way in separate camps. You know? Yeah. And maybe we just listened to the same thing so many times that we just started interpreting it the same way. I think he's all right. I look forward to the night we can have a good game of squash together. All right. You and him and Tony. Or a um, uh, brag. <laughs> a bragging kind of. No, no, it's a game of cards, isn't it? Oh. And it's, uh, he's all right. He's a good bloke, good singer. Really? Good okay, bloke. good. Well, we've, we've managed a rift here. If people, are, if people have already seen your show and they have an opportunity to come out and see this new version of it, what might you tell them to expect? I suck it and see. <laughs> Jimmy always said to me, maintain some mystique, my boy. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it'll change nightly yeah. if we feel in the mood. I mean, that's a very bold thing to say, and I might be lying. But I, it would be nice to think that it changed regularly, so we keep the enthusiasm going. That's why we change the set anyway. Yeah. Uh, it'll be well-paced, it'll be fun, and uh, there'll be different Zeppelin songs than there were before. But again, not. I don't think I'm encroaching too much on on what I call maybe Jimmy's side of things. You know? Yeah. Do you ever get to sit down with Jimmy and talk to him and say, you know, Jimmy, maybe if you did this or became more 80s or something, or you did not intrude on his... I don't think that's a fair question yeah. because he's very happy doing what he's doing and yeah. he's very competent and he plays great guitar and he does exactly, no, I know what, he does. He does exactly what he wants to do. You know? yeah. And as long as we can keep our relationship uh, honest and clean uh, and we can lean on each other now and again, that's all you can ask for, yeah. That's true. Uh, how do you feel about seeing all the young faces in the crowd now? I mean, you saw the same young faces, and there's the older faces, the same old faces, so they're now just like new faces. Young faces in the crowd? <clears throat> well, it's when they get on stage that it becomes a problem. <laughs> and I'm going, ah, oh, you can't get your room key out quick enough. <laughs> <laughs> We can, yeah. Sometimes you actually actually go out and canvas. <laughs> do you find yourself reining the lads in the band in at all? I mean, do you have to like have them home by ten or anything like that? God, well, I mean, I'm not their dad. I'm their, well, I'm, their, I'm the singer in the band. That's basically what I am. They have to bring me back sometimes. <laughs> oh no, he's off again. Quick, get him back. He's far too old for him. And so on. Do they teach you stuff? I mean, do you learn stuff from them every night, or just in playing or in music? Do they turn you on to bands or anything? Yeah, we share. You know, I mean, they, they show me things musically, most of which I start pulling to pieces because I got my I'm very opinionated. <laughs> as they all quietly said, I was a nice guy, but they were lying through their teeth. <laughs> but it never comes to blows or anything, does it? Not yet. But when they know me better, it will. <laughs> The one, the one thing they all said was that it's not like they're a band working for a Robert Plant. This is a Robert Plant yeah. band. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> I mean, I've never ever been in a position where I, I mean, I can wield authority, but authority doesn't mean a thing. It's the worst currency in the world. Yeah. You've got to actually, I mean, you've just got to do it. There's no ifs and buts. It's not a case of being politically clever. No. Uh, you just got to, when you're working with people, you've got to work with them, you know. There's no, there's no real boss. Because... Generally, a group opinion on something is, is much more valid than the individual. Yeah. And I can be a bit petulant, which means I can be wrong a lot. You know. Yeah. Do you have nights when you surprise yourself with your your voice anymore in these days? When you get up there and say, "Wow, gee," I mean, do you think you're still like progressing and going forward as a vocalist? Um, I don't know. I mean, I just do whatever I do, and mm -hmm. I don't. I never. I don't like to listen to the tapes or the bootlegs or anything, and I, I really, I have a kind of tolerance to the whole thing. Mm -hmm. I like to do it, do it, and then 
disappear. And uh, I don't really study the whole thing as to whether it was good. Yeah, but your, your style has definitely evolved over the years or anything. Yeah. I mean, you're seeing with amazing control now. It's oh, that pretty thin line is now, yeah, <laughs> in perfect position. <laughs> <coughs> well, I, you know, sometimes I think I'll try to do something that I did way back. And yeah. towards the end of, this, of um, July, I was surprised at myself because I was doing things that I didn't even want to do <laughs> five years before or ten yeah. years before. But I was doing things in communication breakdown and going, you silly old. <laughs> but it sounded great, you know. But I much prefer, I kind of, I'm at home with things like uh, dance on my own. Yeah. And, uh, but then again, white, clean and neat is as every much, every bit as much blues as yeah. you shook me was, you know. In fact, it's m much more blues. And very personal too, isn't that song? Yeah, it's a, it's a comment, you know. I mean, yeah. the next one will be, uh, I don't know whether it will be a play up on a theme, but the next, it, that sort of, not contemporary, but the realistic comment. Yeah. You don't have to say, um, going to Chicago, sorry, but I can't take you, you know. You don't yeah. have to sing the traditional blues to sing the blues at all. It's true. It's another world, isn't it? I have one last question about, um, the band was talking about, they all spoke about how they're playing classic Zeppelin tunes, but they're all adding their own little bit to it. Mm -hmm. Is that a question of being good or bad, or how do you feel about the, the evolution mm. of the Zeppelin classics today? Not slavishly the copying the arrangements. Well, uh, I don't, I mean, as I said earlier on, there would be nothing ever as good as the initial rendition of the yeah. record. So the best thing to do is not try and keep it too close to the original, and the actual musical delivery is different. The musicians are different, <clears throat> and there's no attempt for anybody to play like anybody else. Yeah. These are songs which I contributed towards in the beginning, there's that song, you know. Um, I don't know whether it's, it's certainly not contemporizing them because they're timeless, they can't be made newer or they mm. can't, you can't do anything to them beyond just play them, you know. Yeah. There's, there's nothing kind of, you could, uh, maybe you could contemporize uh, a couple of acoustic things, you know. Yeah. And, uh, but it's just you get up and play it and nobody's actually ever going to try and play it the way it was. But it'll be close because of the structure yeah. of the song. Dude, yeah. are there any other like songs that you've always wanted to cover in your stage act that aren't Zeppelin tunes? Just like some obscure old song that. Yeah, was... but every time I do one, my manager, Bill Kirby, who struggles with Judas Priest and members <laughs> of the Who, says, "Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that. I like playing Doors songs, you know." <laughs> no, no, yeah. not that one either. <laughs> And then, the, and then the road crew give me votes of confidence, like, fuck off, don't do that. <laughs> wow. Okay, let's finish this thing just off and then you can go do your... Just, if you could sum up what the Robert Plant show is going to be in a few words as possible, let's just think kind of what the Robert Plant show is. The Robert Plant show is 90 minutes of pulsating rhythm, fun and enjoyment, and the cameramen are looking at me as if I'm not serious. <laughs> pulsating, pulsating rhythm. That's it. Up and down, up and down for 90 minutes. <laughs> 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 okay, let's break it.